I have here two KVMs. This one is the ARM-based Jet KVM that's recently been getting a lot of attention for its cute Apple-esque design, and this one here, the RISC-V-based Speed Nano KVM PCIe version meant to be installed into your PC, mimicking something similar to an IPMI interface like you'd find on Enterprise Gear. Both have some appealing features, but which one is a better choice for you? Let's find out. Hey there, home lovers, self-hosters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here. Having the ability to manage and access your computers remotely is a seriously useful thing to have. In the world of enterprise, we typically call this out-of-band management, meaning it's a way to remotely power on, off, and remotely access the console of your system without using the installed OS or even having an OS at all. Typically, in server gear, you'd have this feature built into the mainboard as standard equipment, as you see here with this IPMI interface of one of my Supermicro servers in my rack. All server manufacturers have their own flavor of IPMI, with Supermicro calling theirs SMM, Dell calling theirs iDRAC, HPE calling theirs ILO, and so on. But regardless of the branding and manufacturer, they provide the same features. That's great for people who have enterprise rack servers, but for people who are building their own systems from scratch or using an old consumer or business desktop for their home labs, the lack of an IPMI or out-of-band management interface makes trying to fix things when they break remotely a serious hassle. Enter in our two contestants for today. The Jet KVM has been generating a ton of buzz with this classy compact design, Apple Watch-esque touchscreen display, and a successful Kickstarter campaign that literally blew the doors off their goals, earning over $3.7 million on a $50,000 goal. Wow. We're going to call this guy the Audi because it functionally lives outside your host. Next is the Speed Nano KVM PCIe. The Nano KVM PCIe is designed to be installed into your system and occupies a single 1x PCIe slot. However, it's important to note that it's only pulling power from the PCIe slot, nothing more. We're going to call this guy the Innie because it's only going to live inside of a single piece of hardware. I think it's only fair that we give you a quick feature comparison between these two KVMs to see how they stack up against each other and what makes them unique. Also, as an aside, there's already a ton of content on YouTube made by really great content creators like Jeff Geerling, Tom Lawrence, Level 1 Techs, Craft Computing, and so many more about the Jet KVM and Nano KVM independently. This video is gonna focus on comparing these two based on their differences, the application of the two, and why you choose one over the other. And of course, I'll hit you up with my final thoughts at the end. Let's get to the details. All right, let's run a quick hardware comparison between our two KVM solutions first. First off, let's start with form factor. The Jet KVM is meant to be used externally, and the Nano KVM PCIe is meant to be used internally. The Jet KVM uses an ARM Cortex A7 CPU running at 1.0 GHz based on the Rockchip RV1106G and features H.264 and H.265 hardware encoding. The Nano KVM PCIe uses a RISC-V CPU running at up to 1 GHz and is based on the Milk 5 SG2002 and features H.264 and H.265 hardware encoding. Both units feature Ethernet connectivity, with both the Jet KVM and the Nano KVM PCIe featuring a 100 megabit interface. In terms of Wi-Fi connectivity, the Jet KVM does not feature Wi-Fi, and the Nano KVM PCIe model has optional Wi-Fi 6 capability. In terms of PoE, the Jet KVM does not feature PoE capability, and the Nano KVM PCIe model has optional PoE. Both units have a built-in display, with the Jet KVM having a large 240 by 280 capacitive touch display, and the Nano KVM PCIe having a 64 by 32 OLED display. Both units support direct HDMI connectivity from the host system, with the Jet KVM supporting mini HDMI and the Nano KVM PCIe supporting a full-sized HDMI connection. Both KVMs feature USB connectivity to the host system for emulating USB mouse and keyboard functionality. In terms of remote control, the Jet KVM cannot out of the box remotely power on or off a system. The Nano KVM PCIe does feature the ability to control power remotely. Overall, with the exception of physical power control, the two KVMs have feature parity. It's important to note that while the Jet KVM doesn't currently have the ability to control power or chassis functionality, they're working on an external module to provide that. It's just not available right now. And in regards to the Nano KVM PCIe, the unit we're testing has all of the options like PoE and Wi-Fi, which are not available for the Jet KVM. We just wanted you to know they exist, but we don't consider the lack of them for the Jet KVM to be a major disadvantage here. All right, so hardware specs out of the way, now let's dig into a feature comparison of the two. Let's dig into a feature comparison of the two KVMs now. 
starting with the most obvious actual KVM functionality. The Jet KVM can support up to 1080p at 60 frames a second, and the Nano KVM PCIe also supports 1080p at 60 frames a second. Both the Jet KVM and the Nano KVM PCIe support virtual mouse and keyboard functionality. In terms of remote virtual drive mounting, the Jet KVM only supports client-side remote drive streaming, meaning the ISO you virtually mounted is being streamed from your remote computer to the Jet KVM. The Nano KVM PCIe features local storage via the provided TF card for storing and mounting multiple virtual ISOs. For remote off-LAN connectivity, the Jet KVM offers free remote access via their Jet KVM cloud functionality. The Nano KVM PCIe offers remote access via a pre-installed Tailscale client or fast reverse proxy, which is also available. Again, for the most part, KVM feature-wise, they're essentially equal. However, the local storage for ISOs on the Nano KVM PCIe is a really nice feature over the remote streaming on the Jet KVM. So let's talk about price. The Jet KVM as is will set you back a modest $70 via Kickstarter. The Nano KVM PCIe with PoE and Wi-Fi at the time of this video via Amazon is going for $70 with an additional shipping charge of $21 for a grand total of $91, so it's more expensive. However, if you don't want PoE or Wi-Fi, the price with shipping ends up being nearly the same as the Jet KVM. So here we are, two KVMs that at least on the top line basically offer the same functionality for essentially the same price. So then it's really gonna come down to the application and the user experience. Let's dive into the user experience first. Let's walk through the installation of both the Jet KVM and the Nano KVM PCIe, starting with the Jet KVM first. Out of the two devices, the Jet KVM is the easiest to install. You essentially have three total connections to the unit. A USB-C splitter cable included with the unit uses one connection to power the unit via external USB-C power, power adapter not included, with the other USB-C port used to connect a USB-C to USB-A cable to control mouse and keyboard emulation to the host, as well as act as a virtual drive. Outside of the USB-C splitter, we also have the HDMI connection and the Ethernet connection. That's essentially all there is to connectivity for the Jet KVM. Once you've made all of your connections and provided power, the little unit will boot up, display the DHCP address it obtained, and from there, you can connect to the web interface. Let's take a look at that now. Initial setup for the Jet KVM was incredibly easy. Connecting to the IP address the first time, we're greeted with a little bouncing device and a button at the bottom to set up your Jet KVM. First question was about how we want to authenticate, given the choice between having a password or no password. Honestly, I'm not sure how it's even considered acceptable to not have at least password authentication on a device, but hey, to each their own, I suppose. We'll choose password protected and move on and then we'll set our password for the device. This is the Jet KVM web interface. I personally like the bright white interface, though I imagine some of you in the comments right now will be screaming for a dark mode option, which doesn't seem to exist. Right in the center is our console screen with a few options across the top. Let's run through these really quickly. Paste text allows you to pass your clipboard contents through to the console. Pretty straightforward. Virtual media allows you to select a local ISO and remotely mount it to the remote system, which is useful if you're remotely building a system from scratch. Next is a wake on LAN function for sending a magic packet to wake a host that's offline. This is currently the only way that the Jet KVM can remotely power on a host, and as a reminder, the host must support wake on LAN for that to work. Next is the virtual keyboard that springs up from the bottom of the screen. The keyboard can also be detached to float wherever you need it to be in your session. Next is connection stats, which provides you a few simple graphs on packet loss, round trip time, jitter, and frames per second. Useful if you're trying to troubleshoot network performance. Now on to settings. Here you can check for updates, opt to hide your cursor while in the KVM window, and enable a mouse jiggler to prevent the system from sleeping. As of this video, there is no option to change mouse input modes between absolute and relative, though it's listed as coming soon. Below in video, you can change your stream quality and adjust the EDID settings for the KVM. Next is the Jet KVM Cloud section, which allows you to add your Jet KVM to their central cloud service. Their cloud service allows you to connect to your Jet KVM from anywhere in the world remotely. I'm on the fence about the value of something like this, and I would strongly recommend you look for an alternative method to manage your remote connectivity. In local access, you can enable or disable authentication and change your password. Again, it's 2025, people. At a minimum, you should have a password on something like this. Below that, you can control whether to have the unit update itself automatically and whether you'd like to join the dev channel for updates. And at the bottom, under advanced, you can enable or disable developer mode and troubleshooting mode as needed. Now let's switch over and look at the Nano KVM PCIe. Being that the Nano KVM PCIe's form factor is that of a PCI card, its installation is far more complex than the Jet KVM. 
the Nano KVM PCIe mounts into a standard full height expansion slot on your computer case. And as an aside, the Nano KVM PCIe also comes with a half height bracket for half height installations, but in that configuration doesn't support the Wi-Fi antenna. Once physically installed into your system, you'll need to connect your case's rainbow wires to the header on the Nano KVM PCIe, and also connect the Nano KVM PCIe's power control wires to your motherboard if you want the unit to physically control your system's power. On the outside of the unit, you'll need to connect two USB-A to USB-C cables between the host computer and the Nano KVM, then connect HDMI and Ethernet to the unit to finish off the physical installation. Once the unit fully powers up, you'll be able to read the DHCP address it acquired from the network, and you can connect to the web interface. In contrast to the Jet KVM, the Nano KVM PCIe fully embraces dark mode, which, as an aside, I'm not a fan of. Once we log in, we're dropped at the KVM console, with all functional controls being again at the top of the screen with a fair bit of minimalism. Let's quickly run through the Nano KVM PCIe controls as well. Under the monitor icon in the first dropdown, we can choose which video mode we prefer. By default, H.264 is selected, but the system also supports MJPEG encoding as well. Under resolution, you can choose the display resolution you want to see, from 1080p all the way down to 640x480. In quality, you can further tune your video quality settings all the way from lossless to low quality for conserving bandwidth. In FPS, you can select your desired frame rate for the video, from 60Hz or 60 frames a second down to 24 frames a second. And lastly, there's a reset HDMI function if you're having sync issues between the Nano KVM and the host itself. Moving on, under the keyboard icon, your first option allows you to paste your local clipboard to the remote system. Keyboard brings up a floating keyboard with options to switch between Windows and Mac OS, which is a nice touch. And the last option is a Control-Alt-Delete macro to send a three-fingered salute to the remote system. Under mouse, you have the ability to change your local cursor to one of four different options, with a fifth option to hide the cursor entirely. Mouse mode allows you to select between absolute and relative, which is that missing but soon to be released feature for Jet KVM. Finally, at the bottom, there's a reset hit option for resetting the connection for the mouse and keyboard. Under the CD-ROM icon is where you'd select an ISO to mount to the remote system. Remember, the Nano KVM PCIe only supports mounting remote ISOs that have been copied onto the TF card supplied with the KVM. So, how do you get an ISO onto the Nano KVM PCIe then? The next option allows you to provide a URL to have the Nano KVM reach out and download an ISO for you and locally store it on the card. Next is the script function. The Nano KVM PCIe supports uploading and executing custom scripts you've created on the device to do specific tasks. To be honest with you, I have no idea why you'd want to do something like this, but there it is. Now we're going to get interesting. The next option is terminal. You can select between the Nano KVM terminal, which gives you direct access to the Nano KVM PCIe's console, or if you've connected the serial header pins on the Nano KVM to your system, the ability to connect to the serial interface of the remote host. Clicking on the Nano KVM terminal will pop open another browser tab and allow you to dig around inside the Nano KVM system. Under the network icon, you can trigger a Wake on LAN magic packet to any host that supports it, just like with the Jet KVM. However, this isn't the only way to control power on the remote system. Next, under the power icon, you can physically control the power of the remote system as long as you've cabled up the rainbow wires between the motherboard and the Nano KVM PCIe. Your options are to reset, send a short power button press, or a long power button press with an optional slider to choose how long to depress the power button. This is a massive feature for the Nano KVM over the Jet KVM. Now, let's dig into the settings section. The settings window is a pop-out that first lands on the About page, giving you some overall information about the Nano KVM and providing links to various resources online. Under Appearance, you can change the localized language and enable or disable features you don't want or need to see at the top of the screen. Note that there is no light mode option. Under device, you can opt to set a sleep timer for the OLED display with a variety of different times to choose from. This is probably a good idea since OLED displays on 100% of the time will slowly fade in visibility. You can also configure Wi-Fi if your Nano KVM has Wi-Fi functionality, enable or disable SSH, virtual disk, and virtual network functionality as well. Next is tail scale. The Nano KVM device does not have a unique cloud-managed platform for users to access their Nano KVM devices remotely and instead relies on Tailscale as a means of providing that access. Personally, I think this is a much better option over trusting a third party's cloud, but your mileage may vary. Moving on. Check for updates is pretty self-explanatory. You'll notice there is no auto-update functionality to activate. However, the system does automatically check in the background and will notify you when an update is available. Lastly, under account, you can modify your password for the local admin user on the unit. 
As I stated earlier, both of these units essentially have feature parity between each other, albeit with minor differences. From my personal perspective, I prefer the GUI of the Jet KVM over the Nano KVM, just in the sense that I like a light-themed interface. You dark mode people can fight me in the comments. There are some qualitative differences though that I want to show you now. We're going to do a side-by-side -side of streaming between the two because there are things I've noticed when using both interfaces. Let's check out their streaming quality side by side now because there are differences in performance between the two units. On the left is the Jet KVM, and on the right is the Nano KVM PCIe. I'm going to stream YouTube so we can evaluate the 60fps, 1080p encoding abilities of these two units. Let's kick it off. Comparing the two, it's clear that the Jet KVM is doing a better, smoother job of encoding and streaming the video to my remote browser. The Nano KVM is pulling its weight, but there are clearly dropping frames and a bit of jitter in the stream that's visible in the video. All right, let's get to my final thoughts because I have plenty. First things first, either one of these units will do a fine job of giving you a remote KVM. So the bottom line here is to choose the one that best suits your needs more. It's all gonna come down to the application. If you wanna have an external KVM that you can grab and easily plug into another system without having to shut it down, open the cover and pull it out, then the Jet KVM is for you. If you're looking for a KVM that will operate more like a built-in IPMI interface with the ability to control power, connect to serial and more than the Nano KVM KVM PCIe is your choice. The Jet KVM is really nice and weighty and has a great screen, but the screen doesn't really do anything for you. If I'm being honest, the little touch screen was relatively unresponsible to presses, and when you did press it, you only have the option for a status page or an about page. It's a nice looking display, but I question if it's actually valuable. Could the display have been smaller and still provide the same amount of data and maybe made the product cheaper? Probably. I also question whether the aesthetics got in the way here in the design a bit. I know there are lots of people out there making 3D printer holders for these things to display them in their racks, but why? Maybe over time they'll enhance the UI to offer more features and functionality. We'll see. In contrast, the Nano KVM's PCA display is just large enough to get the actual information you need, IP address and connection status, and that's small enough to be useful but not be the focus of the unit. In terms of feature capabilities, I personally think it's a big deal that you can control power with the Nano KVM PCIe. Coming from the world of enterprise hardware, I think it's an incredibly valuable feature to have and it makes the Jet KVM feel like it was released too soon. I know they're working on an additional external modules to manage power and so on, but they don't exist right now. In regards to performance, the Jet KVM streaming performance was noticeably better than the Nano KVM. I'm not sure if this issue is intrinsic to the hardware itself or if this is a software issue, but I hope they work to resolve it because the lag is real. There are also some quirks with both of these platforms. For example, the Jet KVM has a little USB-C splitter cable to provide dedicated power and then also connect via USB to the host system. You can't power up the Jet KVM without connecting dedicated USB-C power to the unit. But once you do power it up, you can disconnect the USB-C power side and it will continue to function off of host power via the USB HID connection. I find that to be a weird choice. Likewise, if you buy the top-end Nano KVM PCIe, you can power the unit via PoE, even if it's not inside a host. And boy, let me tell you, that's a weird feeling to have a device that looks like a PCIe card powered up if you have a PoE connection to it. Lastly, there is a lot of discussion on security and privacy. I've seen videos about poor coding practices on the Nano KVM, and I don't necessarily buy into the hype. Both the Jet KVM and the Nano KVM are open source and their code is publicly available on GitHub to inspect. I will say that I personally don't trust a third-party centralized cloud solution that is not my own. I do like that the Nano KVM has the Tailscale client built in since I already use Tailscale, but not everybody does, so that may not be an advantage to you over Jet KVM's cloud service. And that, friends, will do it for this video. If you liked it, throw us a sub and a like, and if you have a beef with anything I've said here, let me know in the comments below. Special thank you to our YouTube members. You guys help keep the lights on, and we thank you for it. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider becoming a member or buying some of our swag. It all helps us keep making these videos. And now that you're finished watching this video, how about checking out this place over here with the great hardware reviews we've done in the past. If you're looking for your next great piece of hardware, we can help.